A fiery horse with the speed of light. A cloud of dust and a hearty high yo silver. The Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, government troops were sent to the new territory to subdue the Indian uprisings. But all the tribes were not like the Apache, and all chiefs were not like Geronimo. It was the masked rider of the plains who made the army realize that most of the Indians were quiet and peaceful, and that they would never cause trouble as long as their rights were respected. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Boulder Pass! I am Silver! Away! Major Clark, the commanding officer at the Army Post outside Deerfield, had summoned Jack Smith, one of the Army's civilian scouts, to his headquarters. Two other men were present. The first was Captain Greer. The second was a ragged and unshaven fellow who might have passed for an outlaw. Major Clark addressed the scout. Smith, how well do you know the country beyond Boulder Pass? Well, as you know this post, sir, I was raised there. Oh, yes, I forgot. Well, if I send Captain Greer's troop into that country, do you think you could guide them there without their presence being discovered? Yes, sir. Good. You hear that, Captain? You'll leave in the morning. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Well? Would you mind telling me Captain Greer's mission, sir? Didn't you hear us discussing it? No, sir. You just sent for me. Oh, yes. Well, Captain Greer will call upon Red Wolf Ruth, to surrender and return to the post for a trial. If he doesn't, Captain Greer will seize him by force. What's Red Wolf done? Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir, but I know Red Wolf. A friend of his? Yes, sir. Better yet... And you can parley with him. You might save bloodshed. But Major, Red Wolf's always been friendly to the whites. Oh, friendly, is it? Then will you be explaining why the varmint killed one of my pards and took the rest of us prisoner? Who are you? Big Mike is what they call me. If Red Wolf made you prisoner, what are you doing here? Escaped, I did. A mighty close thing it was. Left your partners behind, huh? Now, look here, young fellow. Enough of that. Smith, according to this man's story, he and his companions were hunting buffalo when Red Wolf jumped them, took them prisoner, and stole their hides. What could they expect, sir, after killing buffalo in that district? Didn't they know Red Wolf wouldn't stand for it? I agree. They were foolish. Nevertheless, Red Wolf must be punished. I doubt this man's story. Oh, no, it's lying I am, huh? Why, you... What? Not... Will you explain that, Smith? Well, yes, sir. In the first place, if this fellow and his partners was just after buffalo hides... I doubt that Red Wolf would be angry enough to do more than drive him out of the district. Go on. If Red Wolf had lost his head, they wouldn't have lived to tell about it. Red Wolf doesn't take prisoners. In this case, it seems he did. And he had a reason we don't know about. If he had, he'll be given every opportunity to tell it. At his trial? Of course. 
Sir, do you think Red Wolf would surrender himself willingly? I'll know how to deal with him if he doesn't. Captain, you don't understand. Red Wolf's a chief. He couldn't surrender even if he wanted to. His people wouldn't let him. But I read... They don't understand the white man's brand of justice. And if they did, they'd never admit that it was superior to their own. You won't take Red Wolf without a fight. And if they want to fight, we'll give it to them. That's why I asked if you could guide the troop there secretly, Smith. I... I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to get someone else. You refuse? Yes, sir. By thunder, Smith, you... I'll deal with this, Captain. Yes, sir. Smith, perhaps you don't realize it, but you're just as much subject to army discipline as any trooper stationed here. I know it, sir. I thought you did, and I've never taken you for a fool. In view of your attitude, I'm prepared to believe there's more behind it than what you've told us. Well, is there? Yes, sir, there is. Let's have it. I've never told this to anyone at the post, sir. Go on. Well, I've called myself Jack Smith, but that isn't my name. Or if it is, I haven't known it. See, until I was 15, I was brought up by Indians. Well, this is interesting. You mean to say you don't know who your own people were? No, sir, I don't. What happened to them? Well, I couldn't say, sir. Well, how did it happen that the Indians got a hold of you? They found me, sir. Eh? Stole you, most likely, if they didn't kill your parents. Now, what's all this got to do with your refusal to obey orders? You're not wasting sympathy on the Indians, I hope. Well, not exactly, sir. If that were the case, you had no business signing on as a scout. Any other tribe, that wouldn't matter, sir. No. But that's the tribe that took me in. No matter why or, or how, they were mighty good to me. And... And what? Red Wolf and I are blood brothers. Did your father tell you, Ruth? About your refusing to guide Captain Greer's troop? Well, there's that, but what I meant was about my not having any folks. About being brought up by redskins. He did, Jack. Well? Well, what? It doesn't make any difference. Oh, silly, of course it doesn't. But, Jack, what did Father tell you when you refused to go? That I had nothing to say about it. Yes? That I was the only scout attached to this post who could do the job. If I wouldn't, I'd be punished to court. If he said that, he meant it. Sure, I know. Jack... You won't refuse, will you? Oh, you can't. I've got to. No. Tomorrow morning, when Captain Greer leads the troop away, you'll be with him. No. You will. Ruth, there's no use arguing. I tell you, I won't. to the guardhouse. I'm reporting for duty, sir. Oh, changed your mind, huh? Yes, sir. This isn't a trick, is it? You're not planning to give our show away, are you? No, sir. You'll be sorry if you try it, I can promise you. You ride with me until we reach the pass. Mr. Lacey, call the roll. We ride in ten minutes. Two weeks later, a masked man with an Indian, both mounted on powerful stallions, looked down into a shadowed valley from the height of an overhanging cliff. Soldiers, Tonto. Ah. What can they be doing on this side of Boulder Pass? Hunter not know. Riding by way of this valley. Whatever they're up to, it certainly looks as though they're not anxious to advertise themselves. Mm. The only business they could have in this district would be with Red Wolf. Not right. With a full troop on the march, it can't be peaceful business. Tonto, we're looking into this. Uh, come on, so Get him up, come, come on. on. Hey, Squint. Can you see him outside this blaster tent? What are they up to? How should I know? Listen. They're dancing now, ain't they? Uh-huh. You figure they're getting their dander up to maybe finish us off? Maybe. But what will we do? Why, ask me. We got to escape. Yeah? Tied up like this with a couple of redskins outside, just hoping we'll make a break for it? <laughs> Hank, don't act like a bigger rigid than you are. Yeah, there ought to be something we can do. Sure. Wait and see if Mike made it to the soldiers. If he did, we'll be all right. If he didn't, well, that's something we won't think about. But I can't. Hold it. Huh? Red Wolf just left his Hogan. I think he's heading here. Then I'm going to tell him. He ain't. I am. I've had enough of this. 
What good will it do us to keep still if they kill us for it? Fool, the only reason they ain't killed us already is because we haven't taught us. But I tell That wolf's been holding off, hoping we do. You keep your blasted mouth shut or we're done for. Here he comes. Oh. Well, what do you want this time? You ready talk? Look, Chief, we Shut up. What about? You steal many horse. Where you hide them? You figure we stole your horses, huh? You steal them. Red Wolf, you're loco. I tell you, we don't even know as much about it as you do. You can hold us here till, till doomsday and we'll never be able to tell you any different. I wish to blazes you'd get that through your head. You hear dance? Sure. You know what mean? Uh-uh. Well, Hank and me were just wondering. You kill three brave when you steal horse. Red men heap angry. Them won't kill you. Why get mad at us? We wasn't to blame. You heap bad. Doggone the squint. Are you shut up and keep shut? Look here, Red Wolf. You're a smart engine. Let me tell you something. What's that? No matter which way you figure, you'd be an idiot to finish us off. If we didn't steal your horses and kill them three fellows you speak of, then you'd be punishing us for something we never done. You do. All right, then. Just for the sake of argument, say we did. Then if we did, we know where your horses are. We could never find out with us dead. Uh, so you lose either way. If we're guilty, you lose your horses. If we ain't, well, don't forget there's an army post not so far away, and what had happened to you would be a caution. Red wolf, not free. It'd be a heap more sensible if you was. Anyhow, you can't lose by keeping us alive. Me no want kill. Well, then what do you got? Other to... Indian want kill. Maybe them not listen, Red Wolf. Mm, I get it. You might not be able to stop them even if you tried, eh? Huh? Ah, uh, eat better you talk. Monique! Squint, that means we ain't got no choice. Yeah, and what's to keep them from finishing us off even if we do talk? They might let us go if they could get the horses back. Mm, when they were sure it was us that killed them three engines. Not on your tin type. We stole them off and wait for the soldiers. Group, halt! Smith. Well? You said you could ride into Red Wolf's village in safety. I can. Very well. We remain here. Give Red Wolf Major Clark's message. Bring me his answer. When you return, be sure not to reveal our position. Captain, you still mean to take him even if he won't surrender? I do. And I'll go. It's a waste of time. This means a fight. Come on, boy. Get up there. The greeting exchange between the young scout who called himself Jack Smith and Red Wolf, the Indian, showed both respect and affection. Oh, 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 there. Red Wolf. How? Oh. Ah, it's good to see you again. It heap good. Why you ride this way? Red Wolf, word just reached the post that you'd taken white men prisoner. Is it true? Ah, uh, it true. I doubted the story. But as long as it's so, and I know you had cause for it. Them thief. Yes? Steal red man horse. Kill red man. So, that's it. Ah, uh, Red Wolf, try make them tell where horse now. And they won't? No. I see. Well, Red Wolf, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. As far as I'm concerned, you're justified. But this is serious business and concerns others. That why you come? Yes, Major Clark sent me. I've been instructed to tell you that if you'll ride to the post voluntarily, taking your prisoners with you, he'll promise you a fair hearing. What you mean? It's the white man's justice, Red Wolf. When you captured those fellows, you must have known it would make trouble. Uh -huh. And well, I want you to know that I haven't forgotten all you've done for me in the past. The trouble isn't of my making. Uh, you brother, Red Wolf. Hmm. I owe you more than I do any white man alive. Uh. I thought the day would never come and I'd have to take sides against you. Why you do? Well, I, I'm not sure. Well, will you go back with me, Red Wolf? No. Me no do that. And I'll have to tell you... What? I... I, uh... What matter? Red Wolf, I've played you a rotten trick. I've brought soldiers here. If you don't surrender, they attack.
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. The Lone Ranger, who had watched the meeting between the scout and the chief from a distance, returned to the camp where Tonto was waiting. Oh, hold there, Silver. Oh, boy. Hold there. Oh. What you hear? I couldn't get close enough to hear what they said, Kimosabe. Oh. But I could tell just from watching them that whatever they discussed, it was serious. Uh-huh. I'm not sure, but I think I know what this is about. What that? White men are in Red Wolf's camp. Uh-huh. I saw their horses. One of the teepees is obviously under guard. The Indians are working themselves up for something. There's going to be trouble, Tonto. And that's what must have brought the soldiers. Not right. I don't like to see it. Red Wolf has been a good chief. Uh, him heap good. We'll prevent that trouble if we can. And what we do? You're acquainted with Red Wolf. Uh-huh. Ride to the village. Talk to him. Find out if white men are really being held there. And if so, why? Time to do it. Here, Scout. I'll wait for you. Get that information. Then we'll see what can be done. Uh-huh. Get him up, Scout. Get him up! Toto, calling upon his friend Red Wolf, learned the truth of the situation and reported to the masked man. Then, late that night, in the teepee where Hank and Squint were confined... Squint! Hey, Squint! You awake? Sure, I'm awake. What's the matter with you? I thought I heard something just then. Huh? Like somebody was moving around outside. Well, why shouldn't you? They still got us guarded, ain't they? Oh, oh. Listen, what was that? Gosh, I don't... Quiet. There's somebody just come in. Anyone in here? Who's there? Keep your voice down. Squint, it's a white man. All right. I've just knocked out your guards and we'll have to move fast. You're gonna free us? I am. Your horses are waiting for you beyond the village. Now cut your ropes, follow me, and don't make a sound. Here are your horses. Now into the saddle. <laughs> Stranger, thank you. We owe you plenty for this. How come you done it? Maybe I could use some of Red Wolf's horses myself, Squint. <laughs> so that was it, huh? Who told you about him, Big Mike? Perhaps. <laughs> Knew you was one of our kind the minute I saw that mad. Are you cutting me in? Uh, reckon you've earned it. Then let's get going before they give the alarm. Right. Get up, Mike. Get up. Get on there, Bob. Come on, Silver. Come on. Less than two hours later, but the Lone Ranger and his two companions drew rain within a small valley. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, oh, oh. There they are. You must have a hundred head here. Over that. And doggone good stock, too. Red Wolf's engines are the only ones I ever knew to have horses worth the stealing. Once we get them across the line, they'll fetch a right good price. <laughs> and no questions asked. How will you get them out of here? When we first stole them, before we was captured, we figured to head further back into the hills and then cut east. You know a better way? I think I do. Yeah, how? Go south, then east. Most of the way, you can keep to the dry arroyos. You'll have cover, and it'll be easier to keep the horses from scattering. But that'll take us towards the village. Not within hearing distance. But I tell you... You'll have easier going, and you'll save mileage. You can be beyond the danger zone before dawn. There's another valley I know about. You can hide there during the day and travel again tomorrow night. After that, you can travel as you please. We can? I thought you was in on this. I am. Then what are you... I'm going to scout the village to see what happens when they discover your escape. They pick up your trail, I'll warn you. 
In any case, I'll be with you again before the night's out. That's a good idea. And let me tell you something. Huh? What? Don't try to double-cross me by going another way. If that happened, I might be tempted to show Red Wolf this valley and put him on your trail. We wouldn't think of it. We're pards, ain't we? We're not. I had my reasons for helping you escape. You had your reasons for accepting that help. I wouldn't trust either one of you beyond sight. Now look, stranger. That's all that needs to be said. I think we understand each other. Now round up these horses and get started. You have my word, you'll see me before morning. Right. Come on, old fellow. Hurry, boy. What do you think? I'd sure like to give that fellow the slip and keep all the horses for ourselves. So would I. But I don't reckon we'd better. We couldn't outrun that horse of his in a million years. And if he was to show our trail to Red Wolf, it'd be our finish. Uh-huh. So, for now, we do like he said. For now? Sure. <laughs> There's always another time, ain't there? And a bullet in the back would go a long ways towards cutting that hombre down to our size. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Sammy. Come on. Let's get these critters on the way. Although no fires were lit where the soldiers had camped, Sentries were on the alert, and Captain Greer remained awake. It was about three in the morning when he heard the approach of a horseman. Whoa, 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 there's Teddy, whoa. Sir. Well? I've been watching the village as you ordered, sir. Something's going on there. I don't know what, but it looked funny. I figured you ought to know. You couldn't see what they were doing? No, sir, just that they was doing a heap of moving around. Very well. I've been expecting this. Smith? Yes, sir? You told Red Wolf we were in the district? Those were my orders? Of course. Well, I think you'd be interested to know that your red-skinned friend is going to try to escape. I don't believe it. <laughs> I've just learned the village is awake. There's no doubt of it. Red Wolf promised to think it over and give me an answer in the morning. Which shows how much faith you can put in the word of an Indian. But I, I... He told you that simply to put us off guard. He had no intention of being anywhere around when morning came. I know Red Wolf better than that, sir. Well, it seems you were mistaken. Well, he's due for a surprise. Oh. I don't understand it. You questioned my judgment when I ordered that we take our position at this place. You see now that I was right. Red Wolf, no doubt, believes we're to the east. This is the way he'll come if he tries to escape. He'll find us waiting for him. I still say he's not leaving. Well, you'll have plenty of time to change your opinion. Tell Lieutenant Lacey I wish to see him. We'll awaken the men and have them ready. Yes, sir. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger had rejoined Tonto. Steady, Silver. The Red Wolf's learned about their escape, huh? Not right. Then return to the village. And what me do? Red Wolf trusts you. Get him to ride with you as close to where the soldiers are camped as possible. Uh -huh. Make it near the bend in that old arroyo. I'll be waiting for you there. And then what do? Then we'll be on hand when things start to happen, Kimasabi. Uh -huh. And we won't have long to wait. Now hurry. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. All right, old fellow. Let's go. Come on, Silver. Soldiers, awakened by their officers, stood silently beside their mounts, ready for instant action when the command should be given. Finally... They're coming, sir. How do you know? We've heard their horses. They're coming down the arroyo from the north. You'll be able to hear them yourself in just a minute, sir. Splendid. They'll find us ready for them. So they wouldn't try to escape us, huh, Smith? I can. <laughs> now you'll see which one of us was right. Listen. You can hear them already, sir. Right. You ambush them? They chose to fight. When I'm finished with them, they'll think better of it next time. But Captain, Take your position. We'll go into action in a moment. Captain, you can't do this. You're questioning my orders. Red Wolf's not a criminal. Do as I told no, you. No, you're not going to take them by surprise. Watch out! Turn back, Red Wolf! Turn back! Arrest this man! Sergeant, take his gun! We have to attack! Bugler, blow the charge! Attacking. Uh, Watch what happens. When they discover their mistake, we join them. Uh, Can you make them out, Tonto? Uh, them right down Arroyo. Good. Them not fire, though. And they probably know they've made a mistake. Ready? Uh, then let's go. Come on, sir. Come on, go, go, go. Go. Oh! 
Bring those fellows here. Right. Uh, get your hands. Captain. Uh, well, well those are the two men Red Wolf picked prisoner. You're sure of that? I saw them. What are your names? Blast it all. What's the idea of this? You might have killed us. Answer my question. Now, look You've here. got plenty to explain. You try to evade it, you'll only make matters worse for yourselves. I want your names and an explanation for these horses. This fella's called Squint, sir. Squint, huh? Well, what about the horses? Hey, they belong to us. That's a lie. But I tell you... Smith here told me Red Wolf's story. That you'd run off horses belonging to his tribe. I doubted the story at first, but now I'm inclined to believe it. Well, what have you to say? Uh, these are wild horses, Captain. We, we rounded them up to sell. Wild we... horses? And how do you explain that several of them are painted? Painted with the same markings Red Wolf's tribe always uses. Have you noticed them, Captain? I have. Uh, maybe some of them got mixed in by accident. Too we... thin. But I... They're ch- both under arrest. Someone's coming, sir. And so I see. Who is it? One's riding a white horse. Maybe the... That fellow's mask. And it's Red Wolf with him. Rain up! Sprint! Ask the fellow helped us escape! <laughs> You recognize me, huh? Hey, just a second. Well? I'm beginning to savvy what's happened. When you told us to bring the horses this way, did you know there were soldiers here? I did. You double-crossed us. I told you I'd give you a warning if the Indians picked up your trail. I promised nothing else. Why? Pilots. Stranger, you're responsible for this? I knew where you were camped, Captain. I directed these fellows so they'd fall into your hands. Why? Because I knew without proof you'd never believe Red Wolf's story. You'd have attacked his village and started more Indian troubles. Now Red Wolf's story is verified, and his horses have been returned. These men have been proven guilty, and they're your prisoners. It seems to me you've accomplished quite a lot. You're satisfied that Red Wolf acted within his rights? Well, after what's happened, I couldn't believe anything else. Come on, Tata. Uh, You're leaving? Our work's finished, but let me suggest something. Yes? Forget your rank and give Red Wolf the apology you owe him. Mask man, I will. Good. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Stop. I'll Get him Silver. Silver. Away. Red Wolf, I do apologize. That heap good. And Smith. Yes? If you'll forget the fool I've made of myself, I'll forget that report I threatened to give the Major. Forget? <laughs> I've forgotten already. Just Heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.